Hello, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 5,687th episode of Andy's monthly production updates. This is production update for February 2024. So uh, let's get started. Jason has been building the media work room and the workshop room, which is like that part of the building. The idea is that we will potentially start doing workshops and it also gives us a space to do stuff like tutorials and things like that because before we didn't really have like a dedicated space and we always had to like move around cameras and things like that so you should see more content tutorials things like that coming out soon um, using that workshop space this is a video update but I put lots of extra information on the blog post so make sure to check out our website on the blog section and also to sign up for the mailing list if you want to get the written updates as well. And obviously there's links and pictures and all sort of cool stuff there too. Uh, yeah, and, and this is sort of like the supplementary part of the uh, monthly updates. So if you have any specific types of workshops or content you want to see, we do have a survey on the blog. Uh, we put out the survey, I think a couple weeks ago also. So feel free to add your suggestions and other content as well. And now that COVID is kind of like subdued, we'll be able to look at doing in-person workshops. And we've been talking with a couple of other groups about doing CNC workshops in different places. And so if you have any connections or suggestions on things on doing that, we're always open to hearing about it. We are uh, talking about the Long Mill Mark II. We're continuing to doing production on that. Things have been moving pretty steadily, pretty smoothly overall. Orders should ship out within the week uh, if you're placing them now. However, we are pretty close to running out of the longboard, the controller, and they are in production right now, but they're not expected to ship until mid-February. So there may be about a two week gap on, like we may stop shipping for about two weeks to restock on those. So if you don't catch the orders before we run out, um, there may be a bit of a lead time. Obviously we'll keep packing machines as we get orders, they will just be waiting on control boards to arrive so we can pack them in as well. A couple other things that are we're working on, the injection molded feet has shipped. They should be arriving in Canada pretty soon, probably in the next couple of weeks. There were a couple different issues that we had that kind of dragged on um, the lead time. Actually, what happened was, and it's kind of funny, there's an outside part of the foot and the inside part of the foot. The inside part you don't really, well, you don't see. You see the outside part but they put the finish on the inside instead of the outside. So that was like the first mistake. Uh, and then there are some tolerancing issues where the size weren't quite correct. We kind of had those sorted out and now we have the first 10,000 feet on the way here. And what's exciting about that is one, it should mean that the parts are gonna be more consistent. So the quality should be better. We can free up the print farm capacity. So, if you guys aren't familiar, we have about 30-ish 3D printers that print all sorts of different parts, the shoes, some of the brackets, and the feet. The feet probably take about 20 to 25% of our production. So it basically like, re like reduces the amount of uh, printing we need to do. It's sort of historically been a bit of a bottleneck because uh, if we want to scale up the printing, we have to scale them up linearly. Probably moving forward from for the Mark II, the only printed parts after the feet are done is going to be the brackets that hold the uh, cables to the back of the x-axis on the 48 version. And, you know, potentially we'll have a, a different manufacturer solution for that as well. So it's kind of interesting because this is kind of like our first group of forays into doing injection molding. One, because we're able to do it at the scale that we need to at this point to make it economical, as well as getting the experience of actually using that in the production process. And also like planning out logistically, because with the printing, it's a just-in-time manufacturing process. With the injection molding, we have to make a few thousand, ten, well, in this batch, we're making 10,000, which should last about eight months, roughly give or take. You know, to briefly talk about the SLB, we will have injection molded components for the e-stop as well. So we're, it's kind of all in the same batch. Right now we are also starting production on batch nine long mill mark twos. So right now we're in batch eight, that's uh, 1,500 long mills. Then batch nine will also be 1,500 long mills. 
and right now we're about halfway through the batch eight stock. So it gives us a couple months to start building out all the materials and the things that we need for the, for the new batch. By my estimation, we should be starting shipping batch nine in the spring of 2024. Things are gonna be different between batch eight and batch nine. Uh, we have made some changes throughout the batch in batch eight. Uh, for example, the couplers are all using M5 screws because some customers were tightening them like way too hard, like way harder than they need to and they're stripping. So the M5 should like basically eliminate that problem. And also like adjusting the, uh, the splits on the couplers to make them easier to tighten and more consistent. And then we have the, uh, the locking nuts, the change in the locking nut design. It prevents marring on the lead screw itself and um, holds the lead screw stronger so they don't like shift much less likely to shift and also they used m5 hardware as well so the whole machine can be assembled with one allen key essentially the spring-loaded anti-backlash nuts i'm sure a lot of people have been anxiously waiting on that i'm happy to announce that after many different issues we have the first batch being in production and they should be coming in about a week and i will share more information about the grant the the, the saga of making those spring-loaded anti-backlash nuts because they look like a very simple part, but in reality, they're a very complicated part and there's a lot of nuance to it. And there's a really long blog post that I've written about everything that you need to know about that. We'll film a short video on explaining those details and kind of give you a first look on the new version of the anti-backlash nuts so you guys can get excited about those. Vortex rotary axis and laser beam are also shipping. Uh, we had a short period of time when we ran out of rotary axis parts. Rotary axis parts have arrived, so they are shipping right, right now. I believe the backlog is cleared. Um, and the laser beam parts, have, they are also arriving, so um, they should ship out pretty consistently as well. So yeah, batch one for the rotary, rotor, vort, vort, eh, vortex rotary axis is now done. That was 300 units. That was our first batch. And uh, yeah, overall it went pretty smoothly. We had like a very minor quality issue with the switches, which kind of got resolved with better packaging. But overall, we've seen a lot of successful projects used with doing that. Um, Ikenna has been working with uh, a new student to design the, redesign the mount for the laser beam uh, to be magnetic and kind of like continue to update and make changes to that as well as uh, a new mount for like updating the mount for doing rotary projects. Those are just happening there. They should trickle out over time. So you can keep an eye out for those. And I believe most of those things will be adaptable between different generations of the laser beam. So uh, yeah, hopefully that'll improve everyone's experience with the, the product. The alt mill project, that one is also moving along pretty quickly. We've received a lot of the major components, the lead screw, sorry, the ball screws, the linear guides, the extrusions, the table legs, the motors, the bearing blocks, pretty much everything that we need to do, use to build the first prototype, except for the gantries. So I believe the gantries are finishing production. Hopefully they'll get shipped in the next week. I would say in the next two weeks, we'll have a fully working machine. There are a couple things that we still need to design and make to kind of like get to the final production version, which would be the router mounts and um, figuring out like how we're gonna uh, approach the spindle or router solution. Mainly because the Makita router is way too underpowered for the alt mill. It'll like basically make it explode if you try to push it as fast as what the alt mill can handle. I have a contact that I'm working with to figure out the spindle solution. We also have spindles here that we are testing with the SLB. So that's all in progress. I'm sure we can fit in a clip on the table. It looks pretty chunky and I'm, it looks pretty good. So I'm excited for that. Right now, Daniel's working with one of the students to test the closed loop steppers and we're painting the components to put together first version. Uh, we're also working with Expatria, the, one, uh, the company that's working with us to make the SLB. So a lot of people have asked if the SLB will be used on the alt mill. The answer is yes and no. So we're not going to use the SLB as it is for that we are going to use for the long mill as the controller for the 
alt mill because it doesn't have support for external drivers. There's like other circuitry that we need to include to be able to do that. Also in the actual SLB itself, the drivers themselves make up a pretty big chunk of the cost. So it doesn't really make sense for us to put them on the board unless we're actually going to use them. In essence, the general plan is to modify the SLB to remove the drivers and have ex uh, outputs to allow for external drivers. We're sort of in the works to plan out the design for those boards and pretty much go from there. The Alt Mills control board will do pretty much everything that the long uh, the SLB will do. Um, have all the same functions and features, the same process on installation as well as the feature set and the inputs and outputs and all that sort of thing, which will make resource development easier for between the two machines. It'll make adding the accessories the same process. So the user experience will be very good between both because as you guys will, as you guys probably know, the G Sender is built to work for beginners, like to be easy to use. And we feel like if we can do that with a more industrial type of machine, everyone's gonna be happy. Next topic, uh, CNC router. So me and Johan have been continuing to work on the router design. There are a couple things that um, have been developing as we've been working on it. The first one is that we just tested the 400 watt motor and I would say that the performance between the 400 watt router and the uh, Makita, original Makita router is pretty similar. I think we mentioned in the previous update that because the efficiency of the Makita router is low, even a, a high efficiency 400 watt brushless DC motor can actually perform like pretty close to what the Makita can do, except in like certain, certain areas. We felt like we're not trying to build just like another Makita essentially. With the capabilities of the long mill as it is now, and because there's situations where the Makita will bog down, like it's a bottleneck in terms of the CNCing experience, as well as um, the potential to use that router on different machines that might be more capable. We wanted to add, be able to have more headroom. Right now we're waiting on two new motors, a 800 watt and a 1.1 kilowatt motor. The actual output power that Johan's calculated that we get out of the Makita is about four to five hundred watts, which means that an 800 watt brushless DC motor that's rated at like 90 percent efficiency should be almost double the power of a Makita while using the same if not less power. And obviously 1.1 kilowatt motor will be even more powerful than that. We think that the 1.1 kilowatt motor is going to be overkill. And obviously the higher the power is, the more expensive the motors become. And there's other limitations that we need to consider besides just the power output. But we believe that with the improved motor power, we'll be able to basically do better than the Makita in every way possible. There is like one other part of this though, which is that the motors are a lot more expensive than the universal AC motors that typically come in these type of power uh, power tools. It's likely that the CNC router will be more expensive. I would ballpark in the $250 mark. So about $80 to $100 more than the Makita. But given all the features, the functionality and the improved precision of the tool, probably still be the default option in the long run. It kind of sits between the Makita router as well as the sp uh, traditional three-phase uh, spindle. If you're looking at about $150, $160 for a Makita router to about $500 for a VF, $500 plus, I think generally on average, about $800 for a spindle. It still like provides uh, a lot of good area uh, aspects of both products. And since it works on 120 volt power, um, you won't need to do any like fancy wiring for it. I have been working on looking at the, having a spindle option as well. However, to get the reliable power that I feel is necessary for like taking advantage of the spindle, you'll have to have 220 volts wired in. And um, we do have like some 110 volts uh, VFDs here and we've done some testing as well. 
But what I found is that I have to drop the current that it can pull, which limits the power of the spindle because if it's too much, drawing too much power, it'll trip the breaker. Uh, like a 1.5 kilowatt is pre pretty much at the limit of what a breaker sh can handle. So if you have anything else attached to it, or if you try to ramp up the speed too fast, you know, you risk tripping the breaker. And I think like looking at other documentation from other companies, uh, CNC companies that offer this, like that's been sort of the general sentiment. They do offer 110 volt uh, VFDs, but usually just for the smaller spindles. So yeah, the new motors are on the way. I think they should be here in about two weeks also. So uh, Johan is on vacation right now, so we probably will put that project on pause until he comes back. We are waiting on some other information to finish building the mechanical parts of the motor body and the bearing uh, stack up. Those are kind of all in the limbo, as they say. Super long board, so Chris has put out an update, a really, really long update. You can like look at that. Um, since that update till now, we have sent in the documentation to start production on the final version of the SLB, which will be the ones that will ship to customers. Uh, we also finished production on the casing, the brackets, and the e-stop components so that we are waiting on to start shipping those to here as well. Everything is moving along pretty well in terms of the manufacturing side. This is, Chris is kind of doing the, what is a kind of, what's the best way to describe it? It's like the, okay, like we have this now, try to break it kind of mode. So Chris, is, Chris has made a call to the beta tester to basically do everything you can to break them. And if we can't break them, then we're probably good. And I think there's a little bit of nervousness because making the batch of 500 boards is a lot of money. And like, there's a very, very complicated board and you know, we're on our third iteration. So every time we do a new iteration, there's like a really minor thing that comes up. And so we're a little bit nervous on that, but you know, we need to, the saying is uh, to make a omelet, you need to break a few eggs. And also I will be going to China uh, for a month. I'm hoping to be able to go to the PCB manufacturing place and potentially bring them back. We will see in my luggage uh, because that'll bring those parts faster into the country. We want to ship them out in March. Uh, Chris has mentioned like depending on how things go, we may have to push it a little bit further, but obviously we'll keep people updated on what the situation looks like. CO2 laser project is continuing to move forward. We have like the prototype built over there. I think the plan is to have it moving and working in the next couple of weeks. So we'll actually have working prototypes ready. I have, I'm not really like in the loop with the project right now. That's mostly on the Ikenna side. I believe the him and Molly are planning to put out some updates on the CO2 laser. So make sure you're subscribed to the blog and the mailing list and follow all our Instagrams and Facebooks and things like that. There's some other minor projects in the works. Uh, we have a couple of new uh, co-op students working for us this term, um, mechanical and electrical engineering. So they're helping Daniel with the uh, wiring for the alt mill, as well as we're building some stuff using the some of the machines that we have to like make the computer like attach the computer interface and the touch screen and things like that. Kind of part of the SLB project and they'll be continuing to work on testing for the new products that we're putting out and continuing to help all the engineers. I think that's pretty much it. Did I miss anything? Paulo says he doesn't think I missed anything. But make sure to read the blog because I will put everything there. And otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next update.